So one of the things that I've been experimenting with and I think is shifting in the world of nutrition um, is being more open to eating other parts of the animal that haven't been as popular in today's culture. So we are very, very heavy like on cow testicles. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, we're like, we're really heavy on the, on the muscle meats, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, muscle meats have a certain amino acid profile to them. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. All different mm -hmm. proteins have a different amino acid composition. Yeah. And so we tend to be, or what, what is being seen is, is we're getting very heavy on certain amino acids that are particular to muscle meats and that there's like three specifically, but that those in excess tend to actually be somewhat inflammatory. So past cultures would eat much more of the animal. So they would yeah, balance yeah. out these muscle meats with- well, e yeah. Either uh, uh, other countries do that way more. Exactly. Still, like if exactly, you're, if you're right. still like Absolutely. if you're in, if you're in yeah. Morocco or you're in Africa, you don't just eat a muscle meat. You eat right. the whole thing. You eat the brain. You eat exactly. everything. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So so yeah, like organs and then other even like more gelatinous -y parts like the knuckles or the necks and stuff like that yeah. has a very different amino acid profile than the muscle meats and tends to balance yeah. it out. And then from like a nutrient standpoint, a lot of the organs are, are very rich in a lot of things. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Like we, we generally in, I'm going to go so far as to say North America, like we don't, we're not big organ eaters. No, no, not at like, all. Like, so I, I don't, I would say I'd be shocked other than, you know, big immigrants, other than you know, immigrants coming from either way, like most of your friends and my friends probably don't eat the heart of a cow very mm -hmm. often. Yeah. Or, yeah. For, or for sure. stuff like that, you yeah. know, um, for sure. That's a cultural type thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you think that, do you think part of that has become the push? There's been a huge push to, um, like that, I don't know if it's vegan, but vegetarian, like a vegetarian or a vegan eating style for athletes, you know, like Michael Jordan even is a promoter of stuff like that. And a lot of the studies, do you think that's come from an easier way rather than eating, you know, yeah, pig's I, brains I think, and pig's yeah. hearts? It's no, easier to sure. just, just eat some more lentils. It's a yeah. little less scarier. No, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, like that's a that's a huge question for sure, and I think there are multiple factors that are involved in that. Um, you know, one of the main ones that come to mind is, I think initially, you know, when I mentioned the the muscle meats, that's sort of the most convenient, biggest bang for buck, easiest to harvest out of the animal. Um, substance that can be sold at the mass scale and sort of because of that a lot of the quality of the manufacturing of it of course as most people know has certainly gone downhill over yeah. the years and that's again of course not to say that you can't get very quality like well-grown um, meat from healthy animals these days but of course it's just harder right so yeah. um in the spirit of you know, people bringing to light maybe some of the not so hot factors that are involved in eating some of like the more mass produced meats that are of a lower quality. It's sort of being depicted that maybe like the vegetarian vegan -y root is a good alternative to get away from that. Um, but, you know, ultimately, like there, there is a lot of literature coming out again from both sides and and of course you know the creation of scientific literature and and studies is a whole nother kind of conversation as to how that's carried yeah, out i mean but yeah if you're if you're a really creative guy you can skew the data any way you want for sure for sure right so yeah but um it, it's 
you know, there's a lot of things that are controversial, like skating yeah. technique. That's a oh, controversial oh. topic yeah. and a polarized topic. But it seems like nutrition is like a crazy, you know, polarized. Like, yeah. it's almost like talking about politics. I could is not it? agree more, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of things come to mind. Like, even something as simple as carbohydrates now are being questioned you know from a performance and athletic standpoint and you know that's being heavily influenced by just the the general culture of carbo carbohydrate restrictive diets but yeah. then you know you would almost never talk to an exercise physiologist that wouldn't recommend carbohydrates for energy production during sport. I mean, that's just well, that as a, as an older happen. guy, like carbohydrates, you know, have been a big thing in the diet, and yes. even more so when I was younger. Like, oh, a hundred percent. And there are, you know, there are a lot of, you know, very like objectively proven reasons, like for hundreds of years, as to why that's the case. Um, but yeah, it's just sort of the, the world we live in now through the, you know, the mediums of, of media and the spread of information that, that can kind of lead people astray. But what, what do you think about the idea of that? You know, it's funny, we talk about Cabro restricted yeah. kind of diets and that you need less of it. But then they get in a supplement. You have your 10-year-old kid yeah. drinking like a huge Gatorade. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> It's like, okay, yeah. you didn't, you didn't want to eat the pasta because you thought it was really bad, but you're going to yeah. give a giant glass of water <laughs> filled with sugar and salt. Okay, that's better. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, and, you know, one of the, one of the points that uh, – kind of miles brought up was you know medicine is just a specific version of what food does you know i think yeah. in a lot of ways of course that's true because what you just said gatorade so okay so you have a carbohydrate and salt um and now salt's uh a little bit different but nonetheless has a lot of misinformation around it like especially when it transfers over to an athletic and performance standpoint but yeah, exactly you know a lot of of nutrients of course can be taken in through food but you know nutrition nutrition is not a main part of medicine today right yeah so you know it, it would be rare that you would you would go to a, a you know a practitioner and get advice specifically on nutrition so like again using that gatorade example a lot of times they're a sort of artificial or external supplementally type of mediums that are recommended yeah. to ingest a lot of these nutrients whereas you know a proper full spectrum uh a pro diet would absolutely check off a lot of the boxes yeah i you know it's tough and it's what's your goal like sometimes being the best possible athlete you can be doesn't always coincide with being the healthiest person you can be absolutely absolutely yeah i mean so, yeah i mean maybe you know, hopefully hopefully yeah. you want to try to strike some balance between the both of them and and not be only one way or the other but Right, you know, for sure. I mean, you always kind of hear about hear about the people who have, you know, X amount of talent and then the rumors about how maybe they don't care about the training or nutrition, yet, you know, they are who they are. Uh, and th the bottom line is you're always going to have that variance in athletics, yeah. right? Um, but, you know, the, the way I like to think about nutrition is, you know, you, nutrition is – one of the most accessible ways in which you can control 
the inner workings of your body, like how yeah. well your body is working, right? And, and how you feel. Well, exactly. So that, that was sort of my next point, like thinking on that, how your inner body is working is absolutely, absolutely an expression of how you feel and how you perform. So just based on thinking about that idea alone, you know, of course, not only in general life, but especially from a performance standpoint, if you can control how well the processes in your body are working, of course, you know, tapping into that and exploring that and making the most of that is going to allow you to perform to the best of your ability. Right? Yeah. I, I 100% agree. Yeah. And I, I almost think that nutrition, even more than something like skating training or weightlifting, is a bit more subjective because I do really believe genetics play a huge part of you know how you break down the food and what food is a little bit better for you than it is for me or related to my yeah. issues or whatever. Yeah, I mean, totally. Like, you know, when we're talking about some of the, some of the athletes that over time may need more, you know, specific tailoring of, of a stride instruction or, or something like that, you know, everybody is in a different context, right? Everybody has a different history and ultimately everyone is living a unique experience. And I think, you know, something that isn't educated well enough for athletes and people in general are what I would call like biomarkers of health. So these are basically just clues that you can observe about your body as to how healthy or well like a nutritional regime is doing. And, yeah. you know, what those are, are... You know, the main one that is overblown, of course, is body composition. Like almost yeah. independent of all else. <laughs> yeah. Like leanness, like muscle mass, like the I, look. Yeah, I, yeah, you're talking about BMI? Yeah. Or, yeah, or, yeah. 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 So, I, like, I think that, that, that's, in, in a lot of ways, that's kind of like the most ridiculous marker in the world. Yeah, for sure. And I and I definitely like <laughs> love to chat more about that one, but. <laughs> like, you know, your BMI, but then, you know, you go into, you know, something as simple as like your energy levels throughout the day, yeah. yeah, your mood, the undulations of your mood, your digestion, your sleep, right? Your skin. So the, like, these are all biomarkers that, you know, one of the first things that I do if I work with somebody from a nutritional standpoint and one, and what I think is probably the most important part of like learning nutrition is starting to be attuned. So starting to learn how different foods make your body feel. Yeah. So you keep an account of all like these biomarkers of health and over time, again, if you're like deliberately thinking and feeling on this, you can find out like what genuinely works for you. I, I wanted and, to just, yeah. I, I'm just going to interrupt for one second yeah. because it's related to a, a topic that I already had that I wanted to just emphasize more, like being attuned and being aware and keeping a notebook. Like Absolutely. that's what I'm super big on, like keeping a notebook. So you have a reference of where you're going, where you came from, mm -hmm. what's happening. You're not just like, guessing in the wind you know no, for me like yeah. when i when you're my goal is to train elite people you got to have you know a methodology a concept a direction and if you don't yeah. have some type of note taking how do you know if somebody's getting yeah. better how do you know how you're feeling for sure i think i felt terrible yesterday but i can't remember now no 100 percent. and you know what what i've seen is you know especially keeping a log. I mean, you, you have to keep a log for sure. Um, you know, when you're exploring some of the stuff, but it's, it's almost so surprising to people over time, how well 
at like how well correlated like eating some foods are with some sort of expression of symptoms, you know? Yeah. Over yeah. time, you know, if let's say you have the, you know, this is a very popular one. Like somebody has the same lunch every single day and every day, mid afternoon, they're bloaty and gassy, but they <laughs> yeah. feel that, you know, before they became attuned to this, um, this correlation they they felt like what they're eating like on paper was something healthy whether that is from what they read or about some somebody told them you know for whatever reason and so the expression of that digestive disruption is trumped by yeah. the emotional attachment to the idea of what, what they said eating. you should it's eat healthy. that exactly right yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know. so i mean that's just one example but to bring it back to a performance standpoint and this is something that I see and notice a lot and everybody who's performed can relate to this, you know, on a Monday, let's say you have a practice and you feel unbelievable, like your cardiovascular health, your, you know, your wind is, yeah. is amazing. And then on Wednesday you have a practice and let's say the Monday was a 10 out of 10 and the Wednesday you feel like a six, yeah. you know, you, your your wind did not get worse. In <laughs> yeah, you didn't out. get you didn't get right. out of shape. Yeah, yeah you, you, exactly. your your health level didn't change. Right. It's you know, the so, intake that's affected it. Or, right. so, or is or sleep and different things. Or whatever. Like that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. So, so, so what changed you know, different? Yeah. Right. The context in which your body is performing at that time is different from from the last bout. Right. Mm. So. Yeah. Again, you know, the all so your metabolism, right? Which, which is you know the chemical processes carried out in order to maintain life. Yeah, needs let's let's call them like ingredients to perform. All the different processes in your body need ingredients. Now, some are made internally. Some you need to acquire externally, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. easy. It's easy to sort of visualize that if a process doesn't have the ingredients that it needs to be successful, of course, it's not going to run optimally. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And our body is amazing in the sense that in the absence of nutrients that it needs to be successful, it can, it can run at a six out of 10, you know, you can yeah. set up base camp at a six out of 10. And of course, kind of, as we know that low grade stress over time can, maybe lead to something more serious, but just sort of on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, you can absolutely be running less efficiently as you could if you are taking in, you know, ultimately what you need to be successful, right? So oh, for sure, yeah. I yeah. mean, thinking about it in the performance standpoint, you know, it's a no brainer for an athlete or somebody who wants to progress, you know, if what you take in directly affects those functions in the body and therefore even how well you can focus yeah right uh, people, how well you can don't focus even, perform yeah. in a session like i mean of course people don't even realize that it, even things like we're both musicians like your practice or your performance as a musician even though physically it's not nearly as demanding as a hockey game mentally you got to be there and what you take in and how much sleep you've had has a huge effect on that a hundred percent and that's actually that's actually a really good point and something that you know when people think about energy output often they really only think about it from a physical standpoint yeah. right but i think everyone can also maybe relate to a time where you know, there was a very extended, like mentally challenging um, task, right? Like, let's say it was like a three hour exam, you know, an essay one, you're yeah. like, you're, you're firing for three hours. You're tired after yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. thinking and using your brain uses a lot of energy, like depending yeah. on the person up to 40% or even more of the energy taken yeah, in yeah, yeah. can be used uh by your brain so you well, know think people of, forget like yeah. th that's a huge part of why i want these talks to be out there and why i want the why questions in a yeah. lesson like 
what does this thing do? This yeah. thing controls your whole body. It controls everything you see in here. Like everything, it needs to be engaged. It needs to be fed. It needs to have power. And you know, this is, you know, this is a great, like, this is a great segue to, you know, I, I love this example of, you know, when a baby is hungry or when a baby is tired, you know, it cries, right? Like it yeah. just cries. And then over time, maybe the parent becomes attuned to what it needs. But when we get older, we tend to express that in a different way. Like we'll just get, like somebody will just get grumpy, right? Yeah, or, <laughs> that's you know, totally me. Think, I'm the worst yeah. when I don't. Totally, eat. you know, it's this like, when you kind of outline it, this makes a lot of sense. Like when your blood sugar is too low and your brain's preferred fuel is glucose, it will break down your muscle tissue in order to get the glucose that it needs to continue yeah. to run. So yeah. it's no wonder that if your body is breaking yourself down, the behavioral expression of that will be Not anxiety good. or, you know, jitteriness or irritability right? Like yeah. that makes sense, you know, yeah. when you say that out loud, right? Yeah. So that, that, it's, yeah, it's yeah. totally, it, it's, it's really obvious, like, you know, as me, like running the school, where sometimes you teach several hours in a, in a row, and you don't get the proper nutrition that you want, you know, by the time you leave the ice and you get yeah. home, you're just like, <laughs> Oh, for sure. Get out of my way. I need the fridge right now. Yeah. And it's funny. A lot of that, like a couple of uh, like nutritional practitioners that I like have kids and they're, you're, they're sort of like very tuned to, you know, how some of these things can express in the children's behavior. So I yeah. love, I love this one. Um, her name is Emma Sugarakis. Um, you know, we can put it in the notes maybe, but yeah, yeah. So before, like when she picks her, her daughter up from school, she always has like a snack ready and she doesn't ask her daughter about the day until she's had that snack. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah. Because it's going to be a knows, different, yeah. For sure. She knows it's been like over three hours since her daughter has eaten and they're not allowed to snack in class. Yeah. So she knows that, you know, her daughter has, you know, low blood sugar at that state. And, and, you know, after she has a yeah. snack, she is literally a completely different person. Yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it, it's, it's, you know, it's a really interesting concept. I, I think, you know, there's a, there's a lot of good information out there. You got to source out a lot of these people but then you got to think about it and experiment for yourself. Totally. Totally. You and, you know, to bring it back to, you know, more of an athletic lens, you know, you always hear about that, you know, that pregame meal, like experiment with what makes you feel good in a bout of exercise. Yeah. And then over time, you know, of course there are going to be other external factors that may be, that same nutritional meal at another time might sit differently or affect you differently. Yeah. That's yeah. Totally exactly. natural. But again, it's just that attunement over time. That, yeah. That and there, you know, yeah. athletes have a lot of superstitions too. So when you find that meal that makes you feel good, if you find a meal that does actually make you feel good, it also is magnified by the idea that I'm eating the meal that makes me feel good. So Absolutely. the whole thing feeds yeah. into each other. Yeah, it creates a positive feedback loop for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, every, yeah, that's, that's another great point, you know, in terms of what can affect the inner workings of your body. You know, how you feel about something does that. Yeah, exactly. Right? And of course, those two things feed, feed off each other. You know, the, the, the poorer the inner workings are, the harder it is for you to have, you know, a positive outlook on something. But when, you know, over time you've built that perception that, you know, this is, this is what I need and, and having access to that makes you feel good and confident that creates that feedback. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's funny, you know, there's, 
sometimes, you know, things are complicated, but sometimes things are simpler than we want to like make them right. You know, talking about getting that feedback loop of good feeling and good food. And, you know, that's why they talk about like the people you hang out with. Yeah. You know, Oh, a hundred percent. You're a reflection of, you know, five or so, or, or however many people you're, you're most closely in contact with, you know, a hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Let, let's just talk about one last, last topic. If you have a few minutes um, right now, most like, let's just say hockey players, because this is an off season and most of them are trying to gain. What's kind of your thoughts on, uh, on gaining? Yeah. So, I mean, and, and they yeah. might be different for say a person yeah. like you compared to me. Well, but we're basically the same size. <laughs> for we should stand up side by side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're pretty, yeah. Much, pretty much the same person. He's about a foot taller for me yeah. uh, than me that for yeah. people that can't see us. No, for sure. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you know, there's a basic equation that, that goes around for somebody that wants to gain weight and that is you need to be taking in more energy that you are putting out right yeah and of the, course the, that i mean of, that that's the most basic concept. that is that <laughs> is the most basic but you know bringing it back to you know being in tune with your physiology it's not as easy necessarily as people think right because ultimately yeah. everybody you need to meet the body where it's at Right. So if one day, if on a Monday or on a Sunday, you know, I'm in one state and on Monday I decide, like, let's say I have a call with a coach and, you know, he says, you know, Dave, you got to gain 15 pounds like this off season, <laughs> right? Which, like, again, of course <laughs> happens and somebody's eyes can be open literally overnight. You know, you, you can't, let's just, I mean, just a blanket. Let's just say this person is ingesting 3000 calories a day. Like it really is not physiologically appropriate and safe to just double the amount of food you're taking in (laughs) overnight. Right. I mean, it's, it's funny, but again, people, people really try and push the physiology. So again, it's just part of like, everybody's looking for the quick fix. I want my, I want my stride fix today. Right. Give me a private lesson to fix it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, how I approach that is, of course, you know, the person needs to start taking in more energy that they were expending. Right. Yeah. And there are two sort of, I mean, probably more, but there is one view that the energy being taken in is only viewed on a calorie basis, meaning it doesn't matter if it's, if it's pizza or wings, like as long as you're getting that, those calories in. Like the Michael Phelps concept. For gaining. Yeah, in, in a way, in a way, yeah, for sure. And, you know, what I tend to, tend to try and spread more is as you add more intake in, cross-reference all those biomarkers that I outlined earlier, right? So your energy, your sleep, the mood regulation, your digestion, because it's totally counterintuitive. If you're taking in all Mm -hmm. this, all this extra energy, but you know, your digestion (laughs) is suffering largely like that is stressful on your physiology. So, Oh yeah. Like if you're eating twice as much, but you have tons of heartburn every single day. Exactly. (laughs) <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, a marker you, that you, maybe weight, you're not going the right way. Exactly. Like that is very stressful for the system. So, you know, increase, di- you know, digestible foods, right? Like that is a really yeah. big one. And like supplemental stuff, like weight gainers and stuff like that are very prevalent these days. And at the end of the day, like athletes and supplements, I've seen this so often and experienced it like early on myself, like a lot of people will intake these big supplements. And if you look at the ingredients, like there are a lot of intestinal, um, you know, aggravators in there. Right. Yeah. And yeah. it's very stressful on the system. So an easy yeah, it's, way. It's just to a, kind of, they, they bought into the concept that bigger yeah. is better. 
Right. So, you know, a very easy way, like let's just say somebody handles, you know, thematically, generally the food that they're currently intaking in, and then they want to start gaining weight. A very easy way is to just start by eating a little bit more of what they already are and then observe and then maybe over time add some other things but like that is that would be step one sort of if you're handling what you're eating well right now slowly like increase the portions of those things in the same ratios yeah and then or and more then meals there. more spread out right so well yeah. yeah i mean again a, a very a very healthy um you know, new, new habit for somebody, let's say, who's, you know, been coming off like a fasting or again, wants to, wants to gain weight, like eating fairly often throughout the day is, is very like physiologically appropriate for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Easier again. for, easier for a lot of people to handle. For sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And again, like just, um, you know, to touch on like just some general, you know, athletic nutrition, more specifically from a macronutrient standpoint, like something I've noticed over time are like the portions of protein in relation to the amount of carbohydrates is getting a little bit skewed. I think just because of what's going on in maybe mainstream nutritional culture, like you know, a huge portion of protein, like let's just throw a figure of like, you know, 50 grams out there, you know, if that's paired with, you know, whatever your carbohydrate source is, let's, you know, yeah. a starch or a fruit, whatever, you know, if that's coming in, at, you know, let's say 20 to 25 grams, you know, what a lot of people notice is about 30 minutes after that, you know, they'll either be cold or they'll be agitated, something like that, right? And yeah. it's just because there isn't at there isn't enough carbohydrate paired with that amount of protein, right? And, yeah, and I'm yeah. just kind of speaking to this a little bit, just on that gaining question, because I know a lot of people think, you know, if if I want to gain, I'm just going to hugely up that protein. Um, but yeah. you know, which might from, make your liver not very happy, and a lot of well, yeah, yeah. So for sure, like a lot of people don't know, but protein is insulinogenic in itself so that means it releases insulin which lowers the blood sugar right so yeah. if you consume a mass amount of like protein by itself your blood sugar will drop considerably because yeah. there was no carbohydrate taken in to balance that out so yeah. i just want to kind of give maybe again everyone's different but something that i've observed over time for sure and has been shown in the literature is you know you need at least a minimum of 1 to 1 protein to carbohydrate yeah. yeah and your body has hold on one sec i'm losing you time hold on you got, you got it you okay got it okay yeah, let, let, let's go back to the <laughs> it was great you were like and yeah. it looked like you were pulling a matrix on me there <laughs> um, let's go to the one-on-one -on -one because this is big and i think we, this is also related to even like you know pre-game kind of stuff oh, like totally. the old mentality of like eating a big steak right before your game yeah yeah, you know, no, yeah, and that absolutely. was a, that was a little bit in my in my age group, yeah. right? For you know, sure. Yeah, you, you know when I when I was younger, you know, it's like yeah, eat this steak right before your game, and you wonder why like the third period comes around. It's like, oh my god, dude, no, totally, totally. Um, but yeah, just to quickly, um, go back, uh, you know. It's, it's being shown over time, like fairly reliably that, you know, the body has a tough time breaking down more than 30 grams of protein at once on a meal ingestion and to balance that blood sugar, at least just to balance it, you need at least a one-to-one -one protein to carbohydrate ratio. Yeah. And then if you notice, you know, that sort of jitteriness after a meal, you know, that is a, or anxiousness, that's a very reliable marker of 
hypoglycemia, so low blood sugar. So there are a lot of people who need a two to one, even a three to one, just to balance that yeah, protein yeah. out. And then, like you said, with relation to performance, you know, a contracting muscle prefers glucose for its fuel. Glucose yeah. produces the most amount of energy with the least amount of energy needed in that production process. So it's the biggest, yeah. easiest bang for your buck. So if you're going in to about not having taken in nutritional carbohydrate, yeah. if you don't have topped up glycogen stores which is stored carbohydrate right yeah. you have yeah. muscle glycogen you have liver glycogen yeah. then you will not be able to perform at your best for a very extended period of time and you will be quickly moving over to your stress metabolism and that that relatively quickly sets on you know the lactic acid and fatigue based so, on what it uses yeah I, I totally agree. It's one thing, you know, it's an interesting thing because working with, you know, hockey players of all ages and all levels, you know, getting them to see the difference, like, you know, when you're playing younger and you're playing a game that lasts 45 minutes and you're on the ice for 10 minutes is quite a bit different than when you're playing a junior or a pro game where you're playing three, you know, 20 minute periods. Like that's a long time. You Absolutely. Know? No, for sure. And, you know, obviously maybe the audience that this is going to reach, some of the players are going to be old enough to take some of this on themselves, but maybe a lot of parents might listen to this where, you know, they have, you know, what there are a lot of six, seven year olds at the power skating oh, yeah. Academy. Right. So yeah. I'll just refer quickly back to that healthcare practitioner with the kids like you can observe, you know, your child's behavior based on what you've fed them for a meal and bring it yeah. to performance. Like look at how they, how they perform out there. And then over time, I, I guarantee that, you know, there'll absolutely be a difference, you know, in behavioral expression or performance and focus in a practice session, mm -hmm. you know, based on feeding them something that, that works for them. And that's yeah, just even, even that. if you just get your, your kid or your athlete to even focus five, 10 percent better, yeah, you're going to get better performance, let alone yeah. anything else. For sure. For sure. Yeah. And, you, know, you think about making the most out of a practice session, you know, if, if you are bringing a heightened focus into it, not only will you absorb the information better. But if your inner physiology allows for better performance, you'll be able to execute more yeah. quality reps during that session, therefore progress faster, right? And this yeah. can all you know, bring that. it back, I be I love that. Yeah. influenced by nutrition, like directly. Yeah. Um, we don't want more. We want more better stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Not just more yeah. reps, right reps. Yeah. No, that, that was fantastic. Yeah. We should probably wrap it up for today. But, yeah. uh, Grant, uh, I'm down if you want to do some more talks. That was fantastic. Yeah, this was really fun. This was really fun. I feel like, you know, every time we get, we get going, we could probably go for <laughs> I know I can... <laughs> on all sorts of different things. But, no, that's, that's great. It's pretty funny. Yeah, I, I didn't want to do it. I just uh, I looked at this, this guy that I follow, a musician. He had, he did a five hour YouTube video on scales that was like five hours. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty intense. I'm a, yeah. I watched it fast forwarding through some of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just learned that you can speed up YouTube videos to like 0.5 of speed. And that's somewhat yeah. of a revolutionary realization. Oh, it's, it's great. Like if yeah. you're, if you're learning music and stuff like that, it's fantastic for that. You can run it at different speeds. Yeah. 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 I totally, I'm down on that. We'll have to talk about that at a later one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah. I love just using the brain. Grant Holiday. I'm Dave Leftov. Thanks a lot, Have a guys. great day. <laughs> Bye for now, Grant. All right. Take care, Dave.